hey, unless you were living under a rock, um, VMware had its, by the way, I want to call it VMworld. It's so yeah. hard. Yes. But it's VMware Explorer. Made that mistake a couple times uh, doing videos when I was there. Uh, and we all attended one way, shape, or form, either in person, uh, either uh, or remote. Uh, so let's dive in. I'm going to give uh, Matt the first crack at this. What what yeah. what happened here, Matt? There's a lot. You know, it's funny because um, every it seems like every year at VM we're Explore. Sorry, not VM World. VM we're Explore. <laughs> um they yeah, I'm gonna, sorry i'm gonna fire the operations guy <laughs> such on, a loser <laughs> so bad it seems like every year there's just a, there's so much news it's almost overwhelming um and I was, I was thinking about it i'm gonna take a little bit longer on my my part if that's okay but i was thinking about it please um yeah i i first used vmware back in um it's vm workstation back in 2002 and it was to do QA work for client acceptance in um, pharmaceutical software many, many years ago, right? And you forget that they went from this company that did these little kind of niche -y things to virtual servers to now they're essentially the control plane for the data center, right? I mean, virtually everything you do in the data center, you're using VMware tools to, to manage or VMware has a, has a solution for it. And I think that's why it can be so overwhelming is kind of when you think about it in the, in the big picture. Um, and that also causes, because of the size of VMware and, and how uh, present it is in the data center, that means every single OEM, every server vendor, every IT solutions vendor, everybody out there um, also has major announcements associated with it. So trying to cover it as an analyst can be kind of difficult and, and overwhelming. A um, few things uh, I found interesting, uh, maybe and maybe not so interesting. The first thing is, you know, they controlled on everything. They or they announced on everything, right, from the edge to the cloud to the core data center. Edge orchestration, edge to cloud orchestration, cloud orchestration, virtualization orchestration, container orchestration, right? Everything that you can imagine um, as, as far as data goes, creating, touching, managing, moving, um, there was an announcement around. The things that stuck out to me, vCN Max, which I thought was really interesting, um, which is the independent scaling of, of storage. Um, coincidentally, uh, Pure Software had a huge announcement around uh, Pure Store Block as well, um, which enables independent scaling of storage in Azure environments um, for the for the uh, uh, AVS Azure for uh, VMware Services solution. Uh, Vico or Veco, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. The VMware Edge to Cloud Orchestration, uh, really cool tool. This this is one of those. This was bigger than just orchestration. You know, I, I like the fact that they went and they did tailored. Uh, kind of reference architectures for certain verticals, retail, manufacturing, industrial. thought that was a really smart thing to do. They're leveraging their partnerships with Lenovo, um, Dell, and HPE. Uh, and, and they did some things I thought were really just kind of, you might think of them as basic, but they're so helpful to IT, like the ability to manage, to uh, instantly, update, instantly update all of your edge, uh, edge environments and the devices on those edge environments instantaneously through the, the click of a button. I think it's in tech preview now, um, but just really kind of basic blocking and tackling that takes managing edge environments, managing cloud environments from literally weeks to, to implement updates to hours or maybe even minutes. Um, really, so really cool story. Uh, I like what they're doing with Tanzu and Aria. So they're taking, for those that don't know, Tanzu is, kind of how you manage application development within uh, a Kubernetes environment and kind of orchestrate your Kubernetes environment. Aria is kind of the multi-cloud management. I love that they're starting to merge functionality. There is a natural integration point for cloud and cloud native applications. Um, VMware seems to be getting that and they're driving further integration of these tool sets, which I think is a really smart move. Uh, I think app dev is, you know, the DevOps folks are gonna love it. And I think the platform uh, engineers are gonna love it as well. Uh, and the last thing, because I could talk forever. Yeah, so um, we could do an entire show on this, but I know. Uh, ESXi, this thing out. So real quick, ESXi, <laughs> lifecycle management. What I talked about um, for their edge environment management, they're bringing to ESXi as well. So if you're a really big company and you have a whole bunch of locations and separate VMware environments, you're able to integrate those into one big um, kind of cluster, if you will, 
and push your updates out to tens of thousands of servers uh, instantaneously. So love what they're doing, like what, the, and uh, and I like the direction they're going of kind of uh, staying on that journey for all their customers, where their customers are in their in their cloud uh, cloud migrations. I'll stop there because I know there's a lot more to talk to. Sorry, <laughs> there's so much we could talk to, and quite frankly, I'm 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 trying to get through the content uh, already. But hey, let's uh, let's go with Will. How about that VMware? Yeah. Uh, been slowly getting into uh, both security and networking. I've been covering NSX for yeah. uh, a while, and and imagine that a, co yeah. a, a company with networking also doing security, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy concept. Shocker. Right? Yeah, shocker. So I'll be succinct. So there was a lot to unpack from a networking and security standpoint. Pat, you mentioned NSX, so they announced NSX Plus. And as you can imagine, um, there's some enhancement, enhancements and features with that cloud delivered networking and security solution. Um, but what I found really interesting from a networking perspective was their announcement of a private cellular network offering. And, um, and if uh, our viewers and listeners don't know this, um, you know, VMware has had a lot of depth in the telco industry for many years, and they actually have their own converged 4G and 5G core. And so they, they've announced finally a private networking um, offering. They're partnered with Federated Wireless. Federated is, is very well known. Um, they, they focus on the RAN and all the integration. And so uh, Federated is gonna be a partner and um, they're gonna come together to deliver this service. Now, it's a little late uh, with respect to other offerings in the market from Nokia and from Cradlepoint Ericsson um, so it'll be interesting to see how successful they are with it. But this is something that's been in pilot for quite some time, but they finally took their apps off at VMware Explore this year. Good stuff, Will. I yep. appreciate you uh, cranking out that article as, as quickly as you did as well. Super impressive. No, no, thank you. And then I'm going to hit security real quick, Pat. So um, something to note uh, within their carbon black portfolio, um, extended detection response is really red hot right now in the cybersecurity world. Um, basically what VMware announced were some extensibility, um, you know, functions to that, that allows now their XDR platform, uh, to operate, uh, as a cloud native application platform protection service. And so they're extending that, you know, given, you know, modern architectures and cloud native application development. This is something that I've written about in the past and actually have, uh, published, uh, a white paper. Um, worked with Cisco on that around Cisco Live back in June with Panoptica, but um, it's great to see that they're they're bringing that level of depth within their XDR platform. Yeah, it's crazy um, how much these guys are doing. You probably also saw the private uh, 5G stuff. As yeah, that's well. what I was talking about. Yeah, uh, my apologies, I was confusing that with uh, Sassy. So good stuff, and there's more. We're not done yet, <laughs> Paul. Uh, you know, for the most part. Uh, the company has stayed off the sidelines on all this AI talk, but boom, uh, there were two major announcements for AI at the at the conference. Yeah, you know, the whole world is uh, turning into a big generative AI uh, model, I think. Uh, I don't know. We, we might be, Paul, we might be bots, so don't give away anything. I'm going I'm to check. I'm going to check. Yeah. Uh, maybe even surprise yourself. Uh, but the uh, VM uh, AI part of this, the product name is uh, VMware Private AI Foundation with NVIDIA. Shocker. Isn't that a shocker? With yeah. who? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a little company, NVIDIA. Yeah. Uh, it will basically allows uh, enterprises you know, to build, train, deploy Gen AI models for applications that are customized using their own, their own data or you know, whatever they want to use. It's a uh, full stack platform. It's got the uh, Gen, AI, Gen AI software, uh, for, you know, to, to, to build and train and customize right out of the box. And it's uh, built on the VMware Cloud Foundation and optimized uh, for AI with uh, Gen AI software and accelerated compute from NVIDIA, of course. But uh, the whole idea is that uh, customers are I mean, it allows customers to build Gen AI wherever they want to, but the, uh, the idea behind it is that uh, when they use proprietary business data to um, to modify these models, 
um, there's some concern that uh, they're open to risk and they could be compromised. So this kind of locks it up. The uh, Private AI Foundation uh, allows the customers to train and and deploy a model wherever they want to. They can use a, a Falcon, uh, a Llama 2, Mosaic, uh, uh, the open AI models from Hugging Face, or they can use their own if they want to. So it's got a lot of fle flexibility. Um, it, the uh, developers have got access to uh, NVIDIA's AI Workbench, which is pretty comprehensive. It uh, allows the developers to to build and test or customize uh, these pre-trained uh, Gen AI models. Uh, it also has uh, has Nemo uh, on the platform. Nemo is the uh, NVIDIA's cloud native. It's got end-to-end -end framework. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can uh, build and customize and deploy their own Gen AI models if they want to. So uh, Nemo kind of acts like the, uh, basically kind of like the operating system of the uh, AI platform. So. Pretty flexible, a lot of uh, capability, and gonna do well. It's uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned or not. It won't be available until uh, next year. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I couldn't nail down an availability for that. And the one thing I I want to point out that was good analysis, Paul. Uh, there's two things they announced around this. So they announced an open source framework, okay, that includes a lot of other companies, including Intel, AMD, and of course Nvidia of how you can stitch this together on your own. And then they came out with a framework just with NVIDIA hardware, right? And frameworks and CUDA and all the magic goodness that, that NVIDIA has, has invested in software. Now the with NVIDIA leads me 100% to believe that in the future we're gonna see with Intel, we're gonna see with AMD. Yeah. And quite frankly, you know, and we might talk about this 27 other times, is, is, is the world needs more competition to make this go around. NVIDIA has done an incredible amount of work uh, to move this forward. I especially like the way that VMware talked about the differences between doing this in the public cloud and versus on-prem. And, and by the way, I think we're gonna see orchestrations where it doesn't matter where you run the workload. Uh, and and you know I, I think, I like the way that they pointed out how generative AI is different from machine learning and deep learning and showing how much more information you, you have to do, you, you have to work with. This is this is no longer just training a machine learning model on how to, you know, identify objects and, and then do something uh, afterwards. By the way, that's, that's not easy, but when you're an enterprise and you have, and, and you're trying to connect you know, ERP data with financial data, with HRM data, with uh, CRM data, uh, all of this proprietary data that's in your enterprise, are you gonna shove all that into the public cloud? Right. It, you know, and I, I think this is, either, it's interesting. IaaS growth has come down, uh, you know, way off its growth rates. I think AWS is 12% this, this last quarter. Interestingly enough, VMware Cloud was 30, 30% growth. Um, different numbers, like law of large numbers uh, kicks in there, but you know, the thing that I'm looking for, and I don't have an opinion just yet, shocking, I know, but uh, is this going to be, is generative AI going to be the thing that gets enterprises to put their data in the public cloud? Or is this going to be the milestone or event that drives on-prem uh, data center? What I do know is, is the OEMs own the edge, right? And that's where I know a tremendous amount of, of inference uh, will be done. Now, so far, I don't think anybody's figured out how to do generative AI inference on the edge, right? Because right? you're looking for you know servers that could be the size of a pizza box that are nailed to the wall of a McDonald's uh, uh, drive-through entrance, right? <laughs> We're not talking about raised floor tile that, that might be at Walmart, which by the way, people call the edge too, 